Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. You know what's funny? I bought a whole bunch of clothes. I've just bought clothes recently. Okay. And I'm always like, I'm going to buy this shirt because I need podcast nice shirt. shirts mm-hmm. to wear on the podcast. And then I just wear the same fucking <laughs> arm merch. Yeah. Or like long sleeve old t-shirts on here. I just mm-hmm. can't be bothered to try to dress up and look nice. Well, I'm like, Ugh, no, I want to be comfy again. I, I'll tell you, this is very comfy. These are like pleather they're like faux leather pants and my ass is sweating just looking at you and them well they're very thin <laughs> oh. and they sound like windbreakers yeah they do when you i walk, walk. And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> it gives me that warm fuzzy nostalgia feeling yeah you're on the courts again <laughs> mm-hmm. and it also gives me swamp ass yeah so. yeah for <laughs> it sure is thin but it is swampy no i get that Uh uh-huh up in here (laughs) yeah y'all gonna make me swamp this ass up (laughs) Up in in here here, up Up in in here here. uh yeah i don't know i just recently have felt the urge to take care of myself and not take care of myself in a way but like pamper me when i feel like being do it do it like the other night i did my nails in like a tortoise shell pattern and it's like stayed on they've not chipped i've not felt the urge to pick them yeah and then I cut my hair the other day. Looks so good. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I was just like, you know what? I want to wear these clothes. They are in my closet. And I know that my body's going to change Mm -hmm. soon. And I want to get in the habit of just trying to get comfortable again and not trying to hide my body like I've I've been doing. I like that. Yeah. Um, Also, speaking of body changes, what I was just saying to her is I appreciate everybody telling me that everything's looking good yeah. it's not finished yet. <laughs> and i do want to say that for anybody who's looking to get any cosmetic yeah. things don't expect like instant results mm-hmm. because it can take up to like the the girl that i went to school with who got it done as well i was just talking to her about it and she's like oh yeah it took me three months to see like yeah. final results so i'm everybody's so sweet and i love you and thank you but it's it's just wait <laughs> wait we're but still going. I will say it's been two weeks and I have no pain. Absolutely well, painless now. So yeah, I can sleep the way I like to sleep again. Yeah. Because I used to sleep with my hands like under my chin. Mm-hmm. And that was so hard because I was like, oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> and my baby has headbutted me multiple oh. times. And no, no pain. So oh, I feel good. really, really good. And it was honestly very a, a simple um, recovery. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Do you want to greet? Oh my God! Shit! Yeah. Hey. <laughs> What's up? What's up, everyone? Hello. Hello. So- sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um. um on, along the same lines of doing this, well, I lines. took it right from your fucking mouth. I said this you is bitch. mine. I'm taking the transition. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. I had guys. This is going to sound ridiculous to some people, but for the majority of you, because I know that you're our people, you're yeah, going yeah. to like. Maybe someone will shed a tear out of, out of pride for me. Um, I went to the dentist <gasps> for the first time in seven years. Wow. Seven years. And congratulations. Thank How was you. it? How fucking bad did your gums bleed? Not very bad at all. Really? Yes. And if you guys are like, oh my God, seven years, that's disgusting. It's been five years for me. And I know that because the last time I went to the dentist was when I was starting to talk to Corey. Oh, yeah. And I remember messaging him and being like, oh my God. I I like no cavities. I like to use the pandemic as an excuse. Yeah, but it's, (laughs) but at the same time, it was, I had, it had been some time before that. Well, first of all, it, it is a, Dent- dentistry privilege. is a privilege. I didn't have dental insurance for the fucking longest time, yeah. and so paying out of pocket uh-huh. for dental uh, visits was was outrageous. Yep. First of all, and some a lot of places wouldn't even take you. They were like, "I don't even care that you have money to pay out of pocket. I don't accept your insurance. You're poor. Go away." <laughs> I was well, like, great. I also think that like when you are trying to budget financially and you know that you don't have dental insurance because for some reason dental health and eye health is not considered health health fucking wild health insurance i don't understand um, it. at least in america and i remember when i would make like our priority list of where we were going to spend money i'm like my teeth yeah can last be on the whatever. list. Whatever. Like, last on the list. Even though I know that, like, they were telling me, like, hey, listen, bacteria can get in there and it can, like, it can fuck you up. It could kill you. You saw what it did to me whenever I got a I tooth know. infection. My whole fucking face swelled up. I know. <laughs> it was rough. I know. But um, even when after that happened to me, 
I got it fixed. Still didn't go to the fucking dentist. After that. <laughs> I was like, what do you want me to do? Well, about the it? last time I had went, that cost was... me four hundred dollars just to take care yeah. of that fucking issue. I know the last time that I had gone to the dentist before this, my most recent time. I went because I needed to get my wisdom teeth out. Mm -hmm. And when I went to get x-rays for my wisdom teeth, the hygienist was who I had known my whole life. Yeah. Was like, uh, it's been three years since your last cleaning. You want to you want to schedule that while you're here? And maybe that's not how she said it, but that's definitely yes. how I heard it. Yeah. And I felt really, really judged. Yep. And so when I missed my next appointment. You're like, I absolutely just don't want to ever go back and be yes. in that situation. Yes. Yeah. So I felt I think really that's uncomfortable. Important to say as well, because not only is it that it's a privilege, but some people have like, I mean, the dentist can be a, a big source of anxiety for yes. a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. So I think that's valid as well to not go. You should take care of your teeth. If you can. It but was it's a huge. Difficult. It was a huge embarrassing thing for me. me I remember. Too. I remember not even talking to my therapist about it because yes. I was like intentionally finding other things to talk about because I didn't want to have to face. I didn't want to have to work on overcoming my anxiety about calling doctors. Yes, I didn't have a primary care physician for the longest mm -hmm. time. Um, the only reason that I have one now is because my mental health got so bad that I wanted to see somebody about medicine medication yeah um, and then luckily my primary care physician directed me to my new therapist who is who I um, have done my EMDR through and when I remember one of my first sessions with her I was like I need to tell you that I am afraid to call the dentist <laughs> and she was like okay and I'm like no, I'm I know that's to even wild. Say this. And yeah. They're probably like, we hear this all the time. Yeah. And so um, she's like, if you want, we can work on that sometime. I'm like, no, honestly, that was just, I'd like to end it there if we could. <laughs> Let's never speak about it again. And then you gave me the information to the dentist and I was able to fill out all the information online. I and they, I set up appointments via text, which was so much easier for me. That's how I knew when they were like, you can do all of your patient, like, new patient uh -huh. forums online and then i yeah like that's who noah goes to because even though i don't do it for myself i have kept up with it for my child but um that's the whole reason i went back is because all he needed like, to go i got it yeah i gotta fucking do it for my kids mm -hmm. and like that'll be do it for the kids man <laughs> do it for my, for my son yeah <laughs> um but yeah, so when I was going with him multiple times, I was like, this place isn't too scary. <laughs> and then I asked the person, we graduated with yes. the person at the front desk and I was like, hey, how do I fucking go about getting in here yeah. as well? And it, because that's, again, I didn't want to say I haven't gone to the dentist in so long, but she was so nice about it and was like, oh my God, here's the form to fill out. Everyone da, da, da. was. Yeah. Every, I told them, Not I was like, hey. Not a single person makes you feel bad there, do they? No. Oh no, I love it. They gave me a weighted blanket. <gasps> they get, I was I was in a massage chair with a weighted blanket. You're joking. I swear to God. And they were so sweet and so gentle and tender. And they had these these pictures of the beach flashing on the screen. And I'm like, you know, I know you said my appointment's gonna be two hours. Could you make it four? <laughs> I'd like to stay kind of a vacation. A little longer. I love that. He was checking my lymph nodes at one point in time just to see if there was any areas of concern. And I was like, a little to the left, a little to, and down, right just there. Yeah, massage, do a kneading motion. He's like, "How's that feel right there?" I'm like, "A little tight." You want to? Just... He's also just like the best. I, I love him. Every time he was in there with Noah, I'm just like, "You're." So... He would just like make jokes with mm -hmm. him and never made him feel bad because you know some kids yeah. don't brush well, yeah. and that kid is my kid. I was also scared about what would need to be done, like dental work wise to like catch me up yes but i just had two little cavities i'm getting them filled tomorrow isn't that incredible i know good job thank you listen i made not a dentist appointment yet but i'm going to but i did make an orthodontist appointment <gasps> and i am so Exciting. fucking excited to hopefully talk about either like invisalign or something i know i said before i wanted all my teeth ripped out you guys made me very scared about that <laughs> So thank you. <laughs> I am going to try to do it the old fashioned way and try to actually yeah. get, I don't want to do braces again. I have like trauma and it's not even about how they look. I remember just like my gums getting, or my yeah. lip, the inside of my lips getting ripped up. I got, I'm there was already a lot of pain prone to like canker sores. And I, do you remember the canker sores you got from there? Yep. Absolutely not. So if I can go with something like Invisalign, I'm fucking doing it. You do still get things on your teeth. Yeah. But you have, but I mean, the guard that's over it is obviously going to create that buffer yeah. that traditional braces wouldn't. Until I come here to talk, because I'll probably take them out 
because I don't, I don't want to have like that, you know. I don't think everyone does. <laughs> well, I know. My, but... So the reason why I looked into it and I made an appointment was because Noah's dad got him mm. finally. He hadn't had any kind of like straightening of his teeth uh, yeah. his whole life, and. He finally did it. And I was like, you know what? You fucking doing that makes me like, I'm going to do it. So yeah. he got Invisalign. And the first couple times that I talked to him afterwards, I could hear it a little bit. But now I don't even notice it at yeah. all. And like, I can already tell a difference. And I'm like, <gasps> I want that. Is, that. <laughs> yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. I don't know. It just made me really excited because th- those were two insecurities I had about around my mouth area. Mm-hmm. And if I could fix both of those, I feel like I will just. Be able to smile without worrying anymore, which yeah. I know people are like, you have a nice smile before. You've never been to a photo shoot with us. No, it's, <laughs> I'm like the worst person to get my picture taken. I think, like, be- mm. and here's like, I know you well enough to know that those have been your insecurities for our whole lives. I yeah. mean, we had people in our face when we were like, infants going bucky bucky buck tooth buck tooth Liter- beaver <laughs> literally so, like, we have been hyper aware of our teeth or like For oh you've got them time. hair and teeth you got you... them big big teeth in the front oh and the, you got the them crooked ones on the bottom those gnarly gnashers don't you <laughs> oh my god so i knew this about you that yeah. this was an area of concern for you yeah. and so when I photograph you or when I pose us, yeah. I usually know what to tell you to do either with your body or with your hands to disguise yeah. things that I, because it's not because they're ugly. No, no, no. It's, it's not just because like, cause when I look back at those pictures, that's what I'm going to hyper focus. You're not going to see anything else. Nothing. So I'm like, I need to distract you yep. <laughs> from the things you're going to hyper focus on so yep. that you're not concerned about them. So you can see the beauty of and, everything else. Oh, you do a great job at it. Thank you. I love getting my pictures taken by you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, and that's why someone asked if I was going to show before and after pictures. And I think I addressed this on our live that we did. Um, I'm not doing any of my cosmetic changes my procedures for anyone else other than myself yeah and i know that there are people who would look at my body right now and be like i would love for to sure look like that yes. i would oh my god that's amazing and like it is this this is going to take a turn this is going to be a funny episode but we're going to go somewhere else right now <laughs> as a survivor of sa yeah and physical abuse and emotional abuse sometimes centered around my body. Mm -hmm. It is, my body has never felt like my own. Yeah. And in this way, and I mentioned this in the last episode, it feels like taking the power back, feels like claiming my body. And like to be able to go somewhere and make a decision for me. Yeah. And no one else gets to say anything about yep. it. No one else gets to touch it, do anything that I don't want done to it. Like it just, it's a very empowering, freeing feeling. It is not, it, it's not an escapism type thing. Yeah, it's not a about stepping what you into look like to other people. Yes. It feels like stepping into my power a 100%. little bit. And I just want people to know that changing something about yourself doesn't have to be the way you step into your power. It's yeah. just the way that I'm choosing to do it. It's just the way that you chose to do it. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes maybe changing just like a life, like a lifestyle change can be it. It can be you stepping into your power. Like, hey, I'm no longer going to shy away from um, going into places that previously made me feel uncomfortable. Right. I'm going to take back my power by going to the beach and wearing what I want to wear or yeah. going to the gym and not being afraid that I don't know how to use the equipment yep. or going to the dentist, even though I'm terrified they're going to make fun of me because I haven't been here in seven years. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Thanks. Okay. That's just our pep talk for the beginning of this episode. Is, I got very wait. hot. <laughs> I think we're going to have more. So you're about to get hotter. Okay. Because people do want us to talk about, and I think we should talk about the small amount we wanted to talk about. Love is blind? Love is blind. Three? Yes. Yes. The third, the third cool. Yes, the third <laughs> cool. <laughs> Here's what we have to say. Hmm. 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 Oh fuck! How do I start this? I don't know. I would just like to say, first of all, before I say anything else, that this is a huge reminder to everybody that number one, Love Is Blind is a show made for entertainment, but these are real fucking people. And also, this show was made uh, in a way that it would be entertaining. So it is heavily edited Mm -hmm. um, in a way that might make certain people look a certain way or 
or yes, the things that they're saying and all of those things um, come out of their own mouths. When you read a book, though, and someone is trying to get you to understand a character, Mm -hmm. they will describe things that have nothing to do with the physical person that kind of tell you who they are. Yes. Like, for example, Cole. Yes. When you they showed his apartment and they did him fucking dirty. They did him by dirty. By showing that toilet. Because honestly, my apartments looked like that. Or my houses looked like that before. If, if like, the week that I had surgery, yep. you fucking better. Yeah, I wish you, don't look at my toilet. <laughs> like, definitely don't do that. I'm not fucking cleaning for a mm-hmm. week. And he was gone for a long time. And he said, like, he had to catch a flight. And that yeah, the it, power he, was his out. His power was out. And all of these things. And, like. And the only reason I bring that up, and him specifically, just because that stuck out in my mind, is yes. they created a character for Cole of being yes. a sloppy uh carefree kind of guy which then hi- heightened Zeneb's um particularity is that a word yeah, around yeah, yeah. cleanliness or, or just picking things up having just- a you've lived alone for so long you're used to doing things the way you do yes. them and, and that's the way that you think this is how it should be done I mean, that was just the easiest couple for me to highlight because I do feel like they created very clear characters yeah. with editing yes. for them. Not that they weren't all, not that the the depiction is completely inaccurate because they are pulling from real events. Sure. But the editing did paint a picture for everyone. A hundred percent. I have been like really looking at reading stories and watching documentaries and things of old reality TV shows. Stars, mm-hmm. stars, and uh, how you know their time, and it's like a recurring theme of like that is not how I am, but that's what was portrayed, and that you know, and there have been people who've lost their lives, have taken their lives, yes, because of the reaction they get then, um, because the public sees them in this one way and only this one way, and so that's going to transition to this other part. I saw, especially in Cole and Zeneb's relationship, uh-huh. toxicity. In both of them. Mutual toxicity. At times. Yes. However, I do not have a superiority complex enough to tell you that I have not done either one. I have been both of those people at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. And the other, if you're like, whoa, but he said this fucking, I didn't actually, we said before, we were like kind of watching it, but we both have small children. If you think that I can just sit and like write a dissertation on a show I'm watching, I'm yeah. half ass watching everything I watch. This so, is hanging out with your your friends talking shit about a show. This is, we are not authorities no, on this. No, we don't, we don't come with notes. No. So, but I would just like to uh, remind everybody for both sides that these are real people. Um. They're probably going to be very ashamed and embarrassed, both of them, for the things that are shown. And unfortunately for me, uh, well, fortunately for me, what how I was when I was kind of both of them in my life, nobody really saw that. Right. So you guys are seeing this version, and this is how I'll be remembered, hopefully, is the per- version of me that's growing and changing and doing good things for yes. people. Yes. They will be remembered. Because you're also, we're also in control of how people yes. get to see yes. us. Yes. Yes. Not other people. And not that it's disingenuous, because what we're saying right now is really what's happening, but yeah. we are also able to learn and reflect and have an opportunity to say, you know what? I don't think that that is how I meant to say that, or that's not representative yes. of me. Like, we get to have that opportunity where they don't. Yes. Uh, so that's kind of all I wanted to say on that situation, mm-hmm. is that I can just... I, I honestly don't want to sit here and try to pick a side or say anything. When we first saw it, and you could see the reaction, we did a fucking four-hour-long live. Yeah. <laughs> because we had so many things to say, and we had honestly a great uh, conversation with everybody in the Patreon. And because there were people picking two sides and the other thing we had to say was i think depending on what you've experienced in your life you view the world through a certain lens we Mm -hmm. both talked about this i don't know if on the podcast but to each other we have and well barbara used to talk to me about that all the time she used to call it my filter yes like we need to clean your filter because sometimes what's happened to you muddies up the way you can view things and i think because of certain people's filters they have villainized either one or the two and Mm -hmm. i'll admit i did the same thing with matt to be honest. Yes. Because of my filter and yes. how I felt triggered when he did certain things. But I, they, I ha- you just have to remember yeah. that 
we're not seeing everything. I think that it's important to watch shows like this for entertainment. But yes. if there are things that are making you feel some type of way, I think that it's important to reflect on yes. why it's making you yes. feel that type of way instead of hyper focusing on labeling a whole ass person. Yes. Off and of a small amount judging them for it. Yes. And like I know we're not we're not free from that. I mean part of it part of the entertainment is having some kind of fucking mm -hmm. commentary about it. Yeah. But if if we are gonna sit and reflect and really get serious about it, because it it did almost feel like people were like, you pick one side or the other. And you have to pick a side. Tell us now, what is it? Yeah. Who's the bad guy? And let and me try like, to convince you why this person doesn't deserve the guy. to have you on their, their side. side. And I don't want to pick sides. I don't, I want Because you everyone and I could involved. empathize with both. Yes. So, yes. yeah, I felt like that was really important to say. And that's really all I want to say on this situation because it was, we were shook. <laughs> yeah. We had moments where we were like, oh shit. But then it became something so much bigger. Nuanced. And I can see the trauma that both of those people had experienced and how this has blown up and probably exacerbated now both of their traumas. Can you imagine having to face your trauma Fuck. for the first time this no. publicly? No. Absolutely. Again, I know who I was when I came out of that abusive toxic relationship mm -hmm. if my next relationship or interaction with another human was then televised i would be fucking mortified and then because the actions that you take when you are still healing yeah. feel justified yes. they feel like the right thing to do yeah and, and they don't always look like the right thing to do from no. a third person but and the fact that people then can go on there and label them you're toxic you're an abuser you're a manipulator as like a blanket statement that's mm -hmm. all you are that to me, I was like, I, I can't get behind that because I wouldn't want someone to do that to me when I right. was at my lowest and trying to grow. Because I think statements like that stunt growth. Then mm -hmm. you get people who are defensive. Then you get people who don't want to change because they feel like they have to fucking fight for their lives again, defend yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think giving them that empathy, allowing a little bit of like, hey, I get it. You well, it's know? the behavior. It's not the person. Yes. And yes. a lot of times something that kept us alive in one situation could then yes. be the thing that is harming us or others, uh, others in another situation. And we won't. Bingo. It's hard to know when that's happening until it's highlighted in mm -hmm. a way that you're probably not going to be proud of. Yes. So this just happened to be something that the world got to see and weigh in on. And yeah, I think it's I think this is a very important conversation to have and yeah. to highlight to give people a, a pause. Um yeah, and to remember that like you don't need to you don't need to pick a side here. No, you don't. Like or this, like have a villain. There doesn't need to be a villain. Both right. of these people could just be human beings. Yeah. Sorry, did I cut you off? Did you have a place to go with that? I'm so sorry. I um think there was a place. I don't know where it was though. Okay. And I didn't have the map there. Okay. So I appreciate <laughs> that I finished it. That you finished it because <laughs> Thank you. I was staring over at that. Oh well, I kind of saw you going off. That's why I was like, I feel like I'll finish this sentence. Yeah, please take the wheel. In a Jesus way. take the okay, wheel. Okay, okay, no, okay. I no, didn't want people great. to hear that and be like, what was she gonna say? Because I wanted to be like, I could kind of see that you <laughs> Who knows? Not me. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I am Halfway through this yeah. <laughs> gut water, so mm. <laughs> I feel that. Do you want me to tell you a fun story to like Love lift, to, oh, lift us a, out of I this? I have a cute little story as okay. well. Oh, okay. I have another cute story. Two cute stories. I already told <laughs> you. Swear to one. God, we're gonna tell you scandals. <laughs> we will. Uh, here's a cute story. Just a real cute one. I told you this. A cute, small, a real tiny, whatever. Um, tiny baby, cute. My baby woke me up the other day. She rolled over and was awake, <laughs> and she woke up. First of all, sometimes she'll wake up in a really good mood, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's terrible. The other day, she woke up clapping yep just like that's how and i was like what and her eyes were barely open but she was clapping herself awake so then she woke up and she rolled over and she'll give me kisses sometimes mm -hmm. but she rolled over like two days ago and she goes tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a, and like rubbed her finger on my neck and i was like she's tickling me like, tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick. listen do you know how fucking cute that is the babies have very limited like <laughs> yes limited knowledge of what to do as people and and the things that she wakes up doing is clapping and tickling you and kissing and kissing i fucking love that little baby yeah but the other thing i want to tell you is my uh -huh. grandparents uh-huh had a dog for like 15 years and my grandparents went, are rolled and had a dog yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. well that dog died <laughs> Sorry. He died. He died. 
Okay, sorry. Okay, so she, she was a she. Why did I say he? Dead doggies club. <laughs> Dead doggies club. Oh, my, oh dog my God. just died. Fucking hell. <laughs> God damn. Um, yeah, okay, so. Not birdie. No. My dog, my dog from my parents. Family dog. My, the family dog. Yeah, yeah, Duncan. We just put him down last Aww. week. He was 13. And so sad. I know. Anyway, well, that's sorry. What they had Penny for like, I want to say around 13 years. Might have been 15. I don't yeah. know. They had her for a very long time. So when she passed, there was a hole there, obviously. Um, like my grandma would still to don't make a whole joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just remember that she died while you were on vacation. Not while me. On while vacation. they were on vacation. <laughs> vacation. Yeah. That's not sorry. Because then I was like, what do you fucking do? Because Honestly? they like took her there and didn't come back. <laughs> well, they did come back with her, but she was in a jar. <laughs> she was cremated. <laughs> It's not so, funny. It's not no, it's funny. not funny. It was sad. It was very sad, but we can laugh about it now. My grandma did. She's anyways. It's she goes to bed with her collar still. <laughs> like yeah, mm. she. So we've been like they need new pets, obviously, yep. but they didn't want to get them. And then we were like, do we get them a dog? They're kind of older. I don't know if yeah. they want it. There was. It's about to be winter here. Well, thirteen years. Up and that might be a- all. Both of them have. <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> you don't. But instead. Mm-hmm. They got two kittens. They have two kittens <laughs> they have now? two kittens now. They went to the Humane Society. Aww. They got two black kittens because they know that black... Well, I don't know if they went. My aunt went. Uh, they got two black kittens because I know that like, black kittens are the ones that don't get adopted usually. Yeah, because bad luck. I know. And so, anyways, I just wanted to tell you this part of it. Their names are Maggie and Maud. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking it's, love I'm that. Not the cutest <gasps> shit you've ever. Heard. I fucking love They're that. Sisters, Maggie and Maud. Oh my god. Maud for a kitten's name is the fucking amazing. I amazing. love that. I knew you would. I couldn't wait to tell you. <gasps> That, yeah. oh my God, if I were like a drag queen, I would want my name to be Maggie Maud. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, my cute story. Okay, go ahead. Today, Ollie wanted a smoothie and he was like, I want a chopped up smoothie. Let's make a chopped up smoothie. And I was like, you can't mommy do them any other way. <laughs> mommy doesn't want to make a smoothie. Okay, no. So let's get in the car and we're going to drive to Pulp. Hell yeah. So I take them to Pulp and we're driving through Dover, which is the town next to us. Mm-hmm. And we're driving past Dover Park. Yeah. And he looks and he goes, is that a school? And I said, no, maybe that's a park. And he goes, why is it so big? And I said, well, because it's a community park. And so they, the, the community is pretty big. They want to make sure that there's enough space for everyone. And he goes, that's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be great. He's like, that is going to be great. You're right. All that space for the community is going to be great. Oh I have God. no fucking clue where he heard that. But it was... The, he's that's like a be great. little old man. I love that. That's gonna be great. That's that reminds me of Noah. That's the shit Noah used to say. Yeah, or like when I went to pick him up, or I went to drop him off at school, and one of his friends was getting out of her car, and he goes, "That's Sage. She's a good friend." <laughs> okay, good. good. She's a good friend. <laughs> I love it. Oh, That's fuck. Amazing. Good stuff. Good it stuff. Good you guys stuff. ready for some scandal? Oh, let's fucking do it. Hell yeah. Mosby, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. You make me feet. You make me feet. <laughs> hey, Mosby, you make me feet. <laughs> and That's what I know. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing for free, Mosby. You make me feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, here's the deal. So, so <clears throat> I wanted to do some kind of listen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when you went. <laughs> there, I guess there was more to that sense. I forgot. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I was Tequila just gonna, Jerry's here. No, I see her. <laughs> She's coming. Present. <laughs> we have two of these to do. Uh oh. It's gonna be fun. So if you want more of these, um, which I'm going to tell you now, are not any specific. I didn't look for hometowns. Ro- ro- I almost said robot stories. <laughs> you are there any robot stories? <laughs> yes, you got robot stories. Right them in. I was just looking for. Is that what bot stands Funny. for? Yeah. Robot? Yeah. Oh, come on. For what real? does bot stand for? Botulism. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> As um, for my German listeners. <laughs> Uh, I was just looking for ones that, listen, we live in Ohio, mm-hmm. and it was just election time, and we're having a tough time. In- yeah, I'm sick and fucking tired of being in a place that's always red. Oh my fucking God. So we're having, we're having a really hard couple 
We're so hard. Lives. And so, <laughs> I've never been harder. <laughs> It's been really hard. Mm. Um, I just wanted to make us all have a good time. So that's what we have. That's the what the stories are. And if you want more, patreon.com slash ladies of tangents. That's where you'll find more. Do you guys, can you even see my legs? Or am I completely blending in with the couch? No, you're 100%. <laughs> I'm just These a are floating all different head. shades of brown. And that's black, I think. This is black. But I said my legs. My legs aren't in here. Your legs are not the same color as the couch. I'm just saying. <laughs> You crazy girl. <laughs> oh, I'm being too silly. That's I'm the just other being a silly goose. You won't be able to hear this, but if you're watching, you'll be able to see. Sometimes with Sawyer, we'll go, who's a crazy, crazy, crazy girl? And she'll like shake her fucking head. She just like shakes her head like a crazy She's girl. She's like, I am. You crazy girl. You crazy, crazy. <laughs> she'll go wild. And it's like my favorite fucking thing. Oh. Okay. Hey, listen. Hey. Do you know who Sabrina Carpenter is? Nope. Okay, Sabrina Carpenter, <laughs> if you listen, or if anyone who knows Sabrina Carpenter listens, tell her I love her. Who is that? She was... Um, tell her I, I bet I'd like her. <laughs> one of the girls in Girl Meets World. The oh, blonde okay. one. Okay. And she's a phenomenal singer-songwriter. Oh. Okay? Also, you remember Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo? Yes, I'm sure sorry, do. Sabrina, that I'm like lumping you into this, but this is I just know this is going to be the easiest way to explain it to see her. So, Driver's License. It's about her. Yes, she's the blonde it. girl. I fucking knew. Okay. <laughs> now, she fucking clapped back with Ooh. this album that she just put out. Ooh. It's called Emails I Can't Send. <gasps> the first song is about her dad. Oh. You would love this song. <laughs> and then one of the songs is called Because I Liked a Boy. Okay. okay. And so she recounts, you know, starting to date this guy. Sure. Happens to be the same guy mm. who wasn't able to stick with Olivia Rodrigo until she got her driver's license. Okay. <laughs> and she gets to the chorus of this song and she's like, I'm a home wrecker. I'm a slut. I'm a, oh, fuck. I've got death threats filling up semi trucks. <gasps> um, basically all because she, and it's because, because I like the boy. All because I like the boy. Holy You guys fuck. are coming at me hard. Oh, tell me who I am because I don't have a choice. All because I like the boy. Oh. Listen, if you have not listened to Sabrina Carpenter's new album, that is go amazing. listen to it. There's Once another again, song. Picking sides for shit you don't yes. know. Like, yes, stop it's doing so that. good. It's so good because she doesn't really call out Olivia in and that. That's nice. She's just saying well, like, like the public is now having these opinions on me yes. and saying this shit to me all because I like some guy. Yes. I didn't mean, like me. Yeah, I didn't That's mean all this fault. shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also there's another song called Nonsense that I wish came out when I was in college, but she would have been like four. <laughs> so that wouldn't have worked. Or 14, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Same um, thing. Yeah, whatever. But uh, it's so good. It's is... so fucking good. Ooh, I can't. All right. Okay, 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 okay. Thank Are you, you Sabrina, ready? for your contribution. <laughs> She used like bureaucratic in a song, and I was like, "What in the jeopardy? <laughs> <laughs> what girl. in the wheel of fortune? <laughs> I'd love what in the I'd like to take a vow <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the fuck. What in the I'd take words that have never been in songs for five hundred, please." <laughs> What in the <laughs> Alex Trebek gone too soon? <laughs> R.I.P. Oh my, my guy. R.I.P. I miss him. I yeah. really do. Yeah. Yeah. Cancer's a motherfucker. It, dude. Especially that one. Mm -hmm. It's a bad one. Mm -hmm. We know all too well. All too well. That's Taylor Swift's song. Is that <laughs> all right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Reel it in. I'm sorry. Here we go. Ten so this version. Starts sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay fuck all right so this one starts hi so i don't think this counts as a scandal at all but it's actually a pretty funny story well that's all we're accepting <laughs> yes no, i'm just kidding we're but only we do accepting love funny, funny ha -ha's. <laughs> no but i do love these oh and before i forget the name you can oh okay we can use the name it's Oh, it's Elizabeth. Not my real name, but if I had to choose, it'd be this one. Okay, I'll call you Elizabeth. Okay, I, I'm down Full with that. Full Elizabeth, or would you accept any shorthands? Oh, I don't know. They can't. Oh, she, her. She can't say. And if you Back. were going to be an Elizabeth, would you be more of an Eliza, a Lizzie, or a Beth? I would say Eliza. Me too. Eliza. That's going to tie in perfectly with this fucking story. <laughs> oh my god. So that's okay. maybe the one she would pick. Okay. 
Anyways, oh, this is sad. I was diagnosed <laughs> with Crohn's disease oh. pretty young, actually. I'm only 15. I feel you. Solidarity, wow. my sister. And the thing they do to confirm it is a colonoscopy. Cronies. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's not fun. They <clears throat> stick a stick up your ass and down your throat. That's what she says. And it's Not true. the same stick. Mm, I think different. <laughs> <laughs> you it is imagine? different. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Which, wait, but if they put it in the mouth first, you can stick that up my ass. Then. <laughs> well, I get it. It's... Stick it in your mouth and then up the ass. That is the order I prefer. That's the song that I wrote back to Olivia Rodriguez. <laughs> I'm a dick sucker in my ass. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. That's not the song. That's not the song. Okay. Um, the process leading up to it is like an ass load of laxatives. It really is. It's fucking terrible. They make you shit your brains out. Mm-hmm. You got to. Mm-hmm. Like, trigger warning, shit and medical stuff <laughs> for this story. Got it. Okay. Part of the prep is you can only eat liquids and popsicles and not purple and red food coloring. Due to all of this shit. So, banana popsicles. Pretty much. Due to all of that shit I just typed, my liquid was Skittle green. Neon green. It's crazy, right? So, like, I'm all prepped, just shit my heart out, and waiting for my colonoscopy. The anesthesiologist's last name was Hamilton. I fucking love Hamilton. <laughs> So I make the reference and continue on with my day. They walk me back into the room and I get laid on the table. They put a very warm heated blanket on me. Pure heaven. The gown I was in was so cold. I love when they do that at doctors. Oh, that sounds like more poops coming. No, no, no. Hold on. Well, I don't know. I can't remember what happened. <laughs> I picked these. So long I was gonna ago. Say, a warm blanket when I'm prone to shitting myself. I'm pooping. Yeah, but she's shit out. She shitted all the way I'm out. I'm shitted. I'm <laughs> clean out. <laughs> clean out of shit. I was allowed to pick the music. Like the anxious bitch I am, I contemplate just saying Taylor Swift to not embarrass myself in front of the Hamilton dude. I finally decided just to say Hamilton. They played it. (laughs) I would love that. It was fucking epic. Before the laughing gas was given to me, I was just lying down freaking the fuck out to Hamilton. Honestly, the best music I've ever freaked out to. So bad they had to turn down the sound of the machine that was taking my heart rate. Jesus, because it was going so bad. <laughs> Continuing with the anxious bitch train, once they gave me the laughing gas, I was sucking down the gas so hard. I did this before my surgery because I was so anxious. And he was like, take a couple deep breaths. And I was like, <laughs> anyways, you get fucking really high. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might have overdone it as I was very high. <laughs> I think I'm going to have laughing gas tomorrow. Oh. When I get my fillings. Oh, that makes me want to get a fill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm I hope fuck. I have cavities. <laughs> I'm about to fuck my teeth up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, everybody. Don't do drugs. But if you do, do laugh again. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. Don't do drugs. Jesus just laugh. Christ. Just laugh. We're your laughing gas. Yeah. Oh. Laughter's the best medicine. That's true. Mm. Um, they were trying to find a vein, minor, minuscule. Oh, and trigger warning. Okay. Trigger warnings, I think, for vein stuff. Um, <laughs> At this point, vein oh. stuff. <laughs> but at this point, I was like sixty-eight. I'm sorry, eighty-six. <laughs> that would have been so small. Eighty-six pounds. Oh my god, and I thought had not I been was hydrated. Age. I was no. like, I was eighty-six years old. At this point in time, I had sped up and aged <laughs> so many years. She was high riding this. I just snorted. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. So 86 pounds um, had been hydrating. So the veins were very small. They were struggling. Oh, my gosh. They stabbed me several times. And the main reason I was huffing and puffing the gas is I'm super fucking scared of needles. It's bad. But they stabbed me in my ankles and my right arm. They finally got the IV in. It took the laughing gas. As I was crashing from outer space, the lights were spinning in the room and the Skylar sister's song (laughs) was stuck playing the same couple of seconds. Over and over. The one where it's like Angelica, Eliza, and And Peggy. Peggy. (laughs) After that was done, the Hamilton guy looked at me and was all, so you'll be sleepy soon. And guess what? I don't remember anything past that. (laughs) I wake up staring at my mom and fully awake. The first thing I remember, I wanted to say a funny after I woke up. The joke in question, my mouth tastes like ass. (laughs) Oh, no, I'm sorry. They said my mouth tastes like butt. I would have said ass, but I'm not allowed to swear at this point. Got it. That poor nurse. Apparently, I had said that four other times. (laughs) I literally thought you said that porn nurse. (laughs) I was like, oh, wow. This is taking its <laughs> turn. No, the, she said it four times. And they were like, "Yeah, we get, it. we get it. Your butt, your butt smells like mouth." mouth. 
four but hey at least i remembered so that was my tale of my first colonoscopy in the wild ride that it was not a scandal but it makes me giggle every time i remember it anyways love you so much you make me feel better about shitting myself occasionally and your episodes are so awesome and are perfect for long hours in the hospital by the way i'm like okay everything is fine in case you're wondering oh, thank, we you, elizabeth. thank you not that was elizabeth a, a fun little you know Eliza. Eliza. can i tell you that <laughs> imagine you're high and that <laughs> smacked most me with that i bonked him i bonked him right in the dome you're like i didn't smack him it was a bonk it was a bonk <laughs> Don't yeah okay well the other day he is gonna be after me <laughs> forrest bonked me with a fucking bus <laughs> on the back of my head and i screamed ow and then i walked out of the house and i go shane and he goes i'm on it and he ran upstairs and i went and i sat in the garage on the floor and held my head because it hurt so bad yeah anyway back to the kids are something fucking else. i know i was cleaning up and he walked up behind me and just like fucking kapow <laughs> bus God. on my head anyway what I was going to tell you is when I had surgery, when mm. I had my D&E, mm. I'm laying there and I'm trying to like make light of the situation because yeah. I am who I am. And they can't get a vein because Ooh. you're not allowed to eat for 12 hours before a surgery. Yep. So I'm sitting there and normally I have beautiful veins. Yeah. Like it takes. I can see them from here. Thank you. Nice it ass takes veins. nothing yeah. for people to take my blood. They're just like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> slipped right in. It. Oh. So easy. <laughs> so they can't get it. Okay. Yeah. They blew my arm veins. Now oh. they're trying to get it in my hand. Yeah. And th it takes three people. And then, you know, the guy who puts Woody's arm back in in Toy Story 2? <laughs> <laughs> He's got I those do. glasses. Yes. <laughs> woman form. Okay. Human woman form comes in and she's like, hey, I'll take care of it. <laughs> and she was not French, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm high at this point. No, I'm not. I'm not because what she was going to give me was going to make me high. <laughs> you didn't have your Emmy in yet. <laughs> I'm just sad at this point <laughs> and trying to make myself feel better. So I heard her French. <laughs> no trauma does <laughs> fucked up shit. I right? It. Okay. So anyway, she's like <laughs> shaking. She's got this needle. And she's like, eh, give me your hand. And I said, like, hey, if you give me an egg McMuffin, I'll get you a vein so fast. <laughs> They're like, I can't give you an egg McMuffin. And I'm like, well, then I can't give you a vein. I don't know what so to fuck tell off. you. But she ended up getting it in my hand. She did? She did. That for her. son of a French bitch <laughs> was like, I'll suck le bleu, found the vein right there. <laughs> She made that sound. She goes, Ugh! and I think that was the reason they couldn't get it in before. No, no. one of them made that sound. They, <laughs> that's what she they tried to do. to do it silent. I think she spooked my vein. <laughs> she went, Ugh! and it went. Ugh! She was like, "Tell it is." <laughs> okay, Jesus. Okay, all right, all right. Next story. Here mm -hmm. we go. This one says, "Hey, hey, my name. Hey, hey, <laughs> like, the, like, like that chicken." <laughs> Forest says Moana now, and it's very cute. That's very cute. It is. Uh, my name says Poppy. Oh, I know from Trolls. No, uh, oh. there's a book that is sure. Where's Poppy, and it's P O P P Y, not P A P I. Not that it matters, but I just wanted you to have that visual. <laughs> That was because I feel like to get where's head. Poppy and where's no, Poppy? Like, hey, where's Poppy? <laughs> are two different things, <laughs> definitely. Okay, my name is Nicole. My pronouns are she, her. Okay, I have to tell y'all about some dramatic shit I did. I was in the Orlando airport with my four-year-old son. Our flight leaves at 6.30. We still needed to ride the monorail to our gate, and it was 6 o'clock. Shout out to my in-laws for thinking we only needed to leave at 4.30 when they live an hour from the airport and knew I'm the type of person that would sit for four hours at my gate and still worried that I'd miss my flight. Anyways, we're walking to the tram and I see it's loading up and no more passengers were going on. So I assumed it was going to leave any second. Uh, oh, the white person from the West Coast in me came out and I hit the oh shit and we booked it. <laughs> I hit the oh shit. Oh ah! shit. <laughs> That was like that was like Midwest gear. <laughs> hit the oh shit. <laughs> I'm just in, I'm just putting along, and then I hit the oh shit, and we fucking take off. Fly. <laughs> we book it. I swing him by the arms over the step and jump in like I was a fucking guy off Wall Street about to miss the subway. <laughs> and then it sat there for a good minute and a half. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've never felt so unnecessary in my life. <laughs> oh, imagine that you're doing some fucking James Bond shit like it's gonna take off and then it just sits there for two minutes. You have to just look around at people like, this is fine. Oh. Thankfully, he's cute and laughed his ass off at me swinging him. <laughs> so it took some of the attention away from my stupid ass. Oh. Love you, bye. <laughs> I love that. I don't know. That's a good story. Maybe I've told this story on the podcast. Maybe I haven't. Now that, well, I guess if if you um, are a part of the Patreon, you've met Randy. But if yes. not, there's a picture of Randy on Instagram. <laughs> She's the one in that. the middle. She is the one in the middle. People um, thought there was another one of our, like uh, one of us again. <laughs> what? Maybe that was, oh, it was Corey. Corey thought that was Sam twice. <laughs> oh, no. No. I was well, like, Randy. Randy. Randy Randy and Taylor both used to have blonde hair. Yes. Now you all have dark hair I and know. I'm just here. <laughs> anyway, so there was a time when my mom was taking the three of us, me, Sam, and Randy, on a vacation that she thought was going to cater to all of us. Mm. Okay. So Sam... That's an interesting vacation. Sam very really different. liked history Uh and so we went to washington dc and we went to some of the um, museums there we went to the some memorials there and then after that i love the beach yeah which like i don't but (laughs) (laughs) in this in this scenario i loved the beach i guess (laughs) and so we went to ocean city maryland okay and then on the way back, we were going to go to a mall or something no it was a brandy like it was Fucking, what's it called? Hooters. <laughs> Hooters. No, no. It, uh, it was an amusement park in Pennsylvania. Shane would know. Oh, oh, oh. oh Kennywood. Kennywood. I Kennywood. Was say, so I we were gonna go to Kennywood because okay. in this scenario, Randy likes roller coasters. I guess. <laughs> I okay. Would never think that. She doesn't it. like sand. So her, her. I that. I think that's why mine was the beach. Yeah. But she also hates waiting in lines, so I'm not really sure why <laughs> why that was hers. But anyway, about um, I'm going to hear from my mom <laughs> shortly. <laughs> so, um, after when we're at where's I going with this? Oh, when we're in D.C. Okay, <laughs> yes, we were on our way somewhere. I don't know. Like I said, I blacked out a lot. <laughs> We're in the subway, and the car that was going Mm -hmm. was supposed to be the one we were getting on. It was going to our location. (gasps) So Randy takes off running. Oh, my God. And she gets onto this train. No one else is running. I I went after her because I was like, oh, my fucking God. If she gets on this, (laughs) like, what's going to happen? So she gets on. I'm able to get my arm through. Okay? (gasps) The doors close around my arm. (gasps) And I'm like... I don't know what to do. It's not like an elevator. If you stick your arm in, they don't open back no, up. You're going with the fucking train. So one of the people who's already sitting on on the train looks at me and she goes, that's not opening back up. And I went, eh. And I pull my arm out <laughs> and it closes and Randy just takes <laughs> off all by herself. <laughs> she is easily mm, 13 oh at the time. <laughs> she sits down and she looks through the window she just like holds her hands up and then drops them. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> and I turn around and I'm like, "What the fuck do we do? I don't know where she's going. She doesn't know where to get off." We are all laughing. She's angry that we're laughing, right? But like, course. what are you to do? How does she know that you're laughing? Is it because it was still sitting there? Well, because as it took off, you, there's still windows. Oh, so <laughs> she could, but you could see that she, she was angry. <laughs> I could see her do the whole arm drop huff puff situation. And so we try calling her and right. she keeps forwarding her calls. She will not speak to us. And I'm like, bitch, you're the one who's lost. This is not, I know you're oh, mad. But like, thing to do. <laughs> so we're then trying to like get out of the I don't subway. Need any of you. Because it's going to be, I don't know how long till the next car comes. Right. So we end up having to jump over the like arm things that where you get through yeah. to go back up to surface level and just run, run. to the next stop and hope she got off there. <laughs> we we obviously ended up reconnecting with her because she was 
in the in the Patreon video. She ended up. We didn't. We never ended up going to Kennywood. <laughs> my she mom got, got that revoked. <laughs> my mom got really mad at Ocean City because I was talking to someone I wasn't supposed to talk to, and oh. then we all couldn't stop fighting, and so she took us immediately home. <laughs> That's just, it's like, I will turn this fucking car on. They did it. <laughs> she did. She did. We never made it to Kennywood. So, anyway. Oh, I love these kinds of stories. I know. It's a good story. <laughs> it, was, it was dramatizing for her. Yeah. I mean, it was dramatizing for me, too, because she was like, you're going to use your, you're going to lose your arm. <laughs> this car's not you know opening I- back up. And I'm like, bye, girl. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the trip. Enjoy See you the- next fall. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit okay okay here's the next one hi ladies my name is sal they them i'm from mm, queensland australia <gasps> fun yes this is a poop scandal about uh, my sister there you're gonna find a theme here and it's that most of these are about shit. <laughs> this is a poop scandal. we had someone tell us before who is in the podcasting world that like uh, they don't believe that it would be entertaining to just tell a bunch of poop stories. They were like, we That's had that. true. We had that pitch to us as an idea. And I was like, absolutely not. No one's going to find that entertaining. And I was like, boy, do we have the audience for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... I don't know who's going to tell her. <laughs> who's going to tell her. <laughs> okay. You guys cannot do that. And we will capitalize. <laughs> yes. Yeah, send Thank them our you. way. If they send you stories, send them to us. Yes. Okay. So. When we went down for my baby cousin's christening, christening, even though we don't go to church, and myself and my sister will burn for being gay, (laughs) Uh we stayed at an Airbnb. My brother, 20, and my sister, 22, went out to the pub and got toey, which is drunk. Oh, fine. I know. Thank you for that. Um, And when they came home, my sister found herself in a bit of a conundrum. (laughs) She woke up and went to find the bathroom in the brand new house that, if I'm going to be honest, was pretty hard to navigate. She got up and found a toilet seat and then took herself back to bed. I awoke about 3 a.m. to find my sister's girlfriend cleaning shit off a chair in the corner of their room and my sister walking naked to the actual bathroom (laughs) to have a shower. (laughs) When I walked in, my sister's girlfriend was laughing her head off whilst my sister was so embarrassed. I came to learn that she had woke up and sat on the chair and did a poo. (laughs) But the seat she sat on was a wicker chair. (gasps) Therefore, it had holes in it. Oh, no. The poo had seeped through the chair onto the floor. Oh, no. Once my sister had done the deed, she crawled back into bed without wiping her ass. And smeared the confidence. <laughs> she was wasted. Oh, yeah, she Toey. was toey. <laughs> she she was, was towed up <laughs> from the flow up. <laughs> and she smeared poo all over the bed. <gasps> and that's why her girlfriend woke up. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, we hey, still- <laughs> she better marry that. I was going to say, God damn. I don't know. You didn't she, end with that. Will you let us she know? Better Message us. Marry her girlfriend because. Holy shit. She cleaned up her poop after being awoken by, by her poop. poop. <laughs> to this day, we still make fun of her and offer to buy her nappies, which is diapers. Yep. <laughs> Whenever she goes out on the piss. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, ladies. Thank you for everything you do. That's <gasps> so amazing. Fucking story. amazing. Amazing story. Um, tragic it, Tra- because that sounds like some play-doh stuff like you just mm. fucking <laughs> pooped it through would it become like the shape of the, the wicker chair the wicker? there's just a wicker chair underneath <laughs> what well, she didn't poop the whole chair you never know it would just be like different size square tubes right what does wicker look like square wicker i hardly know her <laughs> <laughs> Wicker is like if this was a table. Wicker, 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 baby girl. <laughs> no. Oh, if this was a chair, I'm shitting through this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I see what you mean. Yeah. Little tiny square of Play-Doh. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I wonder. But it wasn't liquid shits? How solid? It's drunk shit, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Liquid. Oh, my God. So we're redoing the bathroom down here and Shane was trying to put in the sink. And so when you're working with water, you have to like shut shut, up. shut it off sometimes. Yeah. And so when you turn it off and then turn it back on, it it doesn't like immediately. Yeah. Sometimes it like spits out a little yep, bit. It's yep. like, da, 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 da. 
So, unfortunately for me, mm. that happened when I was using the bidet. <laughs> So I'm sitting there at, and I've pooped like four times this day. Okay. And and my favorite thing to do is to just crank that thing, that thing, <laughs> crank that soldier boy, <laughs> crank it up to give myself an enema, essentially, sure. to clear it out. Because if I'm Yeah, you just let your whole <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because if I'm pooping multiple, multiple times, like You're I like, can't, what else is in there? I can't trust that. Yeah. So I go to do it and it sputters. And so I was like, oh, and so I turned it up higher. <laughs> When I tell you, <laughs> I lasered my labia. I'm not fucking exaggerating. I yelled out and I almost stood up. And then I had to adjust yeah, it. Because I can't turn mine up very high at all. I go no. like half, not even halfway yeah. at my highest. Just enough. Yeah. Just enough just to enough open her up. Make it feel good. <laughs> yeah. But like, because we had just turned the water back on, it was like, did that, that, that. <laughs> fucking hurt. <laughs> mistakes were made i love it this is a really good one mm. so it starts out okay picture butt plugs nipple piercings cemeteries mysterious field trips and texas roadhouse this is my early 20s <laughs> i was gonna say did i, I write this i hadn't seen the nightmare before christmas yeah. like ever so until recently picture? and a hundred percent if someone would have said <laughs> those things that's what i had a picture <laughs> that sounds like the nightmare before christmas <laughs> butt plugs in a cemetery you gonna tell me that doesn't sound like the nightmare no, before christmas definitely <clears throat> and also my early 20s <laughs> like, that's no joke <laughs> this is technically my dad's story but it's fantastic fanta- i don't <laughs> love that we're talking about butt plugs and, and you your said dad. it's your dad's story <laughs> we'll just wait it's good <laughs> well, but it's fantastic and i hope i do it justice So this happened a little while after my parents got divorced. Hashtag Divorce Parents Club. (laughs) Hell yeah. I kind of want that next. Divorce Parents Club. We got Dead Grandma's Club. We got Divorce Parents Club. Oh, hey. I didn't tell you guys this. Uh Uh-oh. We have to tell you something. Sorry. We'll stop this story for a second. I shared... I put the Dead Grandma's Club merch on our site, but when I went to put the stuff on our site that Sierra and I were wearing in the last episode Mm -hmm. or two episodes ago, I don't remember. Yeah. Um... They don't make it anymore. It was out. I could not add it. And mm. so I'm so fucking sorry. Uh, there's there's other options on there. So it, you can still get Dead Grandma's Club merch. It's just not what Sierra and I were wearing because uh, they no longer are carrying it, which is a fucking bummer. So, yeah. so sorry. Anyway. So sorry. Okay. okay. Here we go. Divorce um, Parents Club. We're my, there. Yeah. <laughs> we are there. Hashtag. <laughs> my dad decided to go out on his first date since the divorce. We'll call him Scott. His name's Scott. <laughs> Is that her dad? Yes. Okay. Um, and I don't know her name, but we'll call her Bethany. Well, Scott, <laughs> such a specific name that okay. you don't know. Well, Scott and Bethany are sitting at the bar in Texas Roadhouse, and they're talking as you would on a first date. They're telling each other their interests and such, and Bethany goes, hey, do you want to see something I've been really into lately? And of course, my dad <laughs> says yes. She pulls up something on her phone and shows my dad, and it's butt plugs. <laughs> First date? First fucking date. I, I want to know how many of you um talk about butt plugs on the first date. That, yeah, we need to Let know. me know. Am and I also, prude? Don't. No, don't. I feel like there's a consent thing there. And like a first date, I feel like you're not consent. Unless someone asks you about well, butt plugs. Well, that's what I'm saying. If, if there's but a consent. saying, hey, do you, I want to show you something. That's not. You're right? not opening thinking, that up. I'm hey, I want to show you something I've been into lately. And it's like. Pottery. Yeah. Or fucking a book. Hiking. Right. Looking to see what you put up your ass for. <laughs> <laughs> I am. No, please no, don't. don't. Don't fucking show us. Absolutely do not send me anything you've put in your ass. <laughs> Unless it's Christ. pottery. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm interested. Unless it's a book. <laughs> in which case, you know, she starts showing him a bunch of different kinds and telling him all about them. Any butt plug you could imagine she knew about. Uh, he doesn't want to be rude, so he finishes the date. They're talking in the parking lot, and Bethany says something to the effect of, do you want to go somewhere with me? A vague queen. We love it. <laughs> and hoping it might be normal, he says yes. Hey, listen, at this point... You did that to yourself. <laughs> I think your dad's leaving some stuff out. Okay? Oh. I think he's painting you an inaccurate picture. <laughs> well, hold on. 
He's he's like I was repulsed by the butt plugs, but yeah, we went. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. let's continue this. Okay, Steve, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> they go into her car. They drove separately to the date and head to the mysterious location. So he didn't even follow her. He rode in the car. Yes, he's he in liked the, car the butt with her. plugs. <laughs> <laughs> he said, at the very least, he was intrigued. Hundred <laughs> percent. During that, dr- does not read a man who has concern. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's going to get in that car. During the drive, they're passing a big old cemetery. Keep in mind, it's late, so it's fully dark outside. And at this point, my dad's kind of terrified. About. After about 15 or so minutes of driving, my dad sees that the mysterious location they're going to is, in fact, a sex toy store. (laughs) They go inside. She's got butt plugs on the brain. (laughs) They go inside, and again, she starts showing him all these toys and telling him about them. And telling him about them. This bitch got one track mind. Everything you can imagine. After a while of extreme embarrassment on my dad's side, they finally drive back to Texas Roadhouse so my dad could get his car, and they go to their respective homes. When they get there, um, what? Oh, so they went to their respective homes, but they were together. What? It doesn't make sense. Maybe he drove, he followed her home. That's weird. I need to pause. The fact that you went to a sex store and then back to Texas Roadhouse has me <laughs> fucked up, especially because there used to be a sex store near our Texas Roadhouse. There really did, right across the fucking street. Um, and I went there a time too. <laughs> I went there one time too. Uh, okay, hold on. Wait a minute. When they get there, they start talking and saying their goodbyes when Bethany starts taking off her tops and undershirt, t-shirt, tops? and jacket. Yes, undershirt, t-shirt, Plural. jacket. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Until she is in a tank top with no bra on and she asks my dad, have you ever felt pierced nipples before? <laughs> At this point, my dad was so ready to go, so he said no, said goodbye and went home. <laughs> By himself. Safe to say he was very much traumatized, especially because this was his first date after an 18-year-long marriage, and he didn't go on another date for a while after that. She was too much for him. No, (laughs) my God, that would be fucking terrifying. This was kind of long, but I hope you enjoy it. I love you ladies so much and recently joined your Patreon. Oh, thank you. I love it. You'll hear more of these stories. Yeah. Uh, your content makes me so happy and helps me so much. High school is hard. LOL. Aww. I love you guys so much. Bunch of hearts. I feel. <laughs> I feel. Weird. Also, like, what the heck did the cemetery have to do that? Well, I'm just picturing she's like getting that he a butt was... plug and then going back to the cemetery. <laughs> I think because he was in the car with her and she's, she's just like, driving. just because you're going to murder this ass with this <laughs> butt plug. We just got, I thought maybe we'd do it in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you one time my ex took me to a cemetery? Like, I don't know, because he thought it would be a fun date idea. And I was Daytime, like, nighttime. I nighttime. Need- and I was like, I don't want to be here. And also, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Yikes. And he was like, no, this is a fun thing that people our age do. And I'm like, yeah, I have a child. So can you take me <laughs> home? Because I'm not a fucking teenager. Yeah, I don't want to hang here. out at a cemetery at nighttime. Yeah. Yikes. When- or daytime. No. My dad's the cemetery director. Unless so I'm like, visiting a loved one. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to just go hang out in the cemetery. I don't, I don't feel some type of way about cemeteries. Like like I just said, my dad literally is in charge of them. Yeah. And I've taken my kids to visit him and they're just like running around. Not well, on what, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I feel like it's, uh, I mean, do your thing if you like going to cemeteries. But I, I feel like there's a level of disrespect that he, it, in that moment that I was in. Yes. And I was like, hey. I have loved ones who are dead, not in this cemetery, but like if I saw teenagers or uh, just like dicking around adults, yeah, just like yeah, hanging out there, I'd be like, hey, go the fuck home. What yeah. are you doing? Ugh, yeah, makes me feel weird. Yeah. I'm not trying to have a picnic there. Like, no. <laughs> could you pass the brie <laughs> over Aunt Sherry? <laughs> I had an Aunt Sherry. I have an Aunt Sherry. Oh, that's right. Hey. I want you to be alive, okay? That was not me saying any no, type of no, thing no, towards no, no, you. No, no. I've actually thought about calling you recently. So. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, girl? Okay, this one says, hello, ladies. My name is Sonia. I want to mm-hmm. say Sonia or Sonia. I don't know. I'm going to say Sonia. Okay. She, her, 17, and I have a rather unfortunate story regarding a certain NYC pasta night. I've struggled to share this tale, but y'all are my homies, and I thought, fuck it, we ball. <laughs> 
I love the way these are written. My brother attends Columbia University in NYC, and last November we visited him for the first time. Before going to his dorm, we decided to stop at a stunning restaurant that had a plethora of pasta options. I chose a five-cheese pasta and devoured the entire thing before heading onto campus. I know some will never be able to fully enjoy such a divine meal due to unfortunate bouts of lactose intolerant. And as I found out later that night, then peeps be me. (laughs) (laughs) During this time, nobody was allowed to go in the dorms because of COVID, but my brother borrowed his friend's ID and he snuck me in. Mm -hmm. While I was waiting in my brother's room as he returned the card to his friend, I began to feel some rumblies in my tumblies. (laughs) But at this point, I wasn't too scared. Hashtag alpha mentality. (laughs) It was written beautifully. so good. So I let out a little toot to relieve some pressure. Mm -hmm. Harmless, right? No. Wrong. (laughs) So wrong. Brown gold started to rush down my brand new (gasps) jeans. Oh, no. Panicked, I clutched my booty and rushed out the door. I waddled down the hallways to try to find a restroom and ran into my brother, who noticed my state of desperation and pointed me to the right. I was so very pleasantly surprised to be met with a collection of youths gathered in the common room. I must say it was the highlight of my year when that group of genius college students stared at my insufficient attempt of stopping the never-ending stream of liquid shit flowing from my ass. (laughs) The death grip never works. And then subsequently leaving the room when they heard the disastrous noises coming from inside the bathroom. Oh, no. Luckily, it wasn't a room with stalls because I dripped the entire way to the toilet. Hey, been there. Been Me fucking too. there. Filling my brand new custom Converse with DIY chocolate. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I texted my mom crying, and she didn't believe me. It took her 10 minutes to finally call my brother and ask him to bring me some sweatpants and shoes. He said when he opened the door, he almost passed out because of the heinous sense (laughs) that smacked him in the face. I used toilet paper to wipe the floor slash toilet slash clothing slash literally fucking everywhere. I started to gather myself and began to leave, but the toilet did a little shh, 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 shh. Oh, no. And I left my biohazard almost overflowing because <laughs> the toilet wasn't working. Yeah. Jeepers, what a cow a bummer, I thought, as I was horrified <laughs> by the dumpster fire of a mess I made. I must have been trying to flush for 10 minutes when I had to leave because my parents called an Uber. I saw a girl in the hall gag when I opened the door and I walked past her. I'm so glad that's not your door. I know. I discarded my clothing in a dumpster outside. <laughs> the dumpster. Been there as well. You got to. And found my family who were absolutely dying laughing outside while I was actually dying on the inside. The 40 minute Uber ride back to Soho was entirely awful. And it was humbling when the precious driver kept apologizing for the scent, claiming it must have been from his last passenger. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) The cherry on top was when my parents paid my brother to go flush the toilet, and it worked. I just didn't flush it the right way. (laughs) Long story short, my nickname, as coined by my brother, is officially Lucy Bells. (laughs) And I don't think I will ever hear the end of it. No tea, no shade, but in terms of NYC pasta, not too fond of it. Anyways, thanks for reading my atrocious story. I'm sorry if it was too gross. (laughs) I've been listening to you guys from the beginning, and Tuesdays are my favorite day of the week. You've helped me through so much, and I wish you guys the best. Also, I named my puppy Frankie, too. Oh, that's cute. My puppy Frankie boy. Oh, that's cute. That one, I I was like three sentences in, and I was like, I don't even care what the fucking end is. I'm using this because of how brilliant. It's written. It was so fucking funny. Oh. Corey was looking at me and he's like, "What's what's going on?" Because I had You're my AirPods shaking. in and I'm like convulsing from laughter reading that. I, I was like, I can't wait to fucking read this. Oh, that's so fucking good. That it's is very good. good stuff. It was good. Hey everyone, hey. thank you for sending your stories. These are fucking beautiful. Yeah. If you want more, we're gonna continue recording. Yes. So we are. This this was one of those that. It felt like no time at all. It wasn't no, so it really, fast. It really didn't. Um, How many so, did we read? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry, if, sorry, everyone, if you didn't, but you know, th- I gave you some pretty long ones. I no, felt. I think they were good. I think yeah. it was good. Um, if you guys want more, though, patreon.com 
Slash ladies and tangents. Yes. Did I just hear something? There was like a ting ting upstairs. Oh, like I thought I heard something. a whistle. Anyway, um, we love you guys so much. We do. We Thanks will. for hanging out. My foot has been in this <laughs> this little beanbag chair this whole time. For a while. <laughs> yeah, for a really long time. And it's so comforting. I anyway, like it. Um, we love you so much. We will see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye. Bye.